Hello, and thank you for watching Science 360, Stem Cells Demystified. Since stem cells are so often in the news, we'll start this program by seeing a newscast. In today's science headlines, researchers are excited by the isolation of so-called amniotic fluid stem cells by Dr. Anthony Atala. That's right. These cells are easier to obtain than embryonic stem cells, but researchers believe that they may provide many similar therapeutic possibilities. And that's the news for tonight. Good night. Good night. Sleep tight. And don't let the bed bugs bite. Okay, wait. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what this stem cell stuff is all about. What about you, Jane? No, Tim. I have no clue either. What are stem cells? Why do scientists study them? Why is some of this research controversial? <laughs> Maybe our friends at Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center can help demystify stem cells for us. Before we jump into stem cells, let's review some basic biology. Do you recognize this molecule? Yeah, that's DNA. Isn't that in our cells or something? DNA resides in the cells of all living organisms, apples, as well as humans. But what is this DNA doing in all of our cells? DNA is like a gigantic cookbook for our cells. Just like a cookbook is full of recipes that tell us how to combine ingredients that make a dish, our DNA is full of genes that tell our cells how to combine ingredients, called amino acids, to make proteins. Each gene is like a single recipe, a recipe for a protein. Let's watch a computer animation of how proteins are made from DNA. First, we see the DNA strand. It's ready to be transcribed. That yellow molecule is the RNA transcript. It will be translated into a protein elsewhere. Now the ribosome is assembling the amino acids into a protein. And there's the completed protein. Proteins are molecules that determine how our cells look and what they do. All of our cells have the same cookbook, or DNA, but the cells can look very different and perform diverse tasks. For example, look at your hand. Cells make up the skin on your hand as well as all other tissues and organs. Now consider cells from a different part of your body, such as your eyes. These cells have the exact same DNA as your skin cells, but the cells in your skin don't look like the cells in your eyes, and the cells in your skin act differently than the cells in your eyes. Your eyes see because they have specialized cells for vision. Your skin protects you because it is made of specialized cells that are water resistant and durable. In fact, your body has more than 200 different types of cells. How do all these different cells come to be? Let's go back to the cookbook example to see how this happens. Imagine you're a chef in an Italian restaurant. You have a giant cookbook with tens of thousands of recipes for every kind of cuisine you could imagine. If you wanted to make only Italian dishes, then you would look at only a few of the recipes, the ones for Italian dishes. That's what our cells do. Every one of your cells has the same genes, more than 20,000 of them in fact. But each cell has a very specific job, so it uses only a select set of genes. Just like restaurants tend to specialize in certain types of food, our cells specialize in certain functions like seeing, transporting oxygen, or conducting electrical signals. Here's a picture of DNA. Now let's zoom way out. Our cells use only a fraction of our genes during cell development. The genes that are used determine what type proteins will be produced and therefore what kind of cell it will become. But what about stem cells? I still don't understand what stem cells are or why they might be useful. Stem cells are cells that are able to differentiate 
or specialize into different cell types and maintain their population indefinitely. You could think of stem cells like this lump of clay. Right now, it's not specialized for any purpose. But with the right prodding, it could become lots of things. Pictures, sculptures, plates, or even a ball. There are two main kinds of stem cells, embryonic and adult, and possibly a third kind, amniotic fluid stem cells. Let's consider embryonic stem cells first. After an egg is fertilized, it is called an embryo. In about five days, the embryo takes the form of a mostly empty ball of cells called a blastocyst. This is a magnified view of a blastocyst. It's actually about one-tenth of a millimeter across. For reference, the tip of this pencil is about one millimeter across. Scientists take the cells from the interior of this blastocyst to get embryonic stem cells. These stem cells have the potential to specialize into any of the more than 200 types of cells in your body. Any more questions? So does that mean only embryos have stem cells? We all have stem cells in our bodies right now. These are called adult stem cells, but it's a little misleading because children and even babies have adult stem cells. Adult stem cells can be found in many of your tissues. For example, you have stem cells in your bone marrow. These stem cells constantly replenish the cells in your blood. This includes red blood cells and many other types of blood cells. It's a good thing because every time you get a cut and lose a little bit of blood, this is how you get those cells back. Unlike embryonic stem cells, adult stem cells can specialize into only a few cell types. Going back to the clay analogy, an adult stem cell is like a rather strange lump of clay that can become only a few different types of objects, like only pictures but no statues or plates. Finally, there are amniotic fluid stem cells. They appear to have some of the properties of both embryonic and adult stem cells, but they are not obtained from human embryos. Are you two still with me?